the Division of Agriculture here at the University of Missouri. I'm one of the members of the MU Plant Research Symposium Organizing Committee. This year, our organizing committee consists of four PhD level graduate students and four postdoc and research scientists. It's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of the MU Symposium Organizing Committee to welcome you all to the fifth annual MU Plant Research Symposium today. We're delighted to have you with us uh, to participate and share research. Thank you for attending from all around the world to share and learn about research. This is a reminder to us that science is truly global as we collaborate together to empower science. This symposia series was started in 2017 with the aim to bring together numerous groups across the University of Missouri, other universities, and the community with vastly diverse research directed towards a unified goal, improving crops to solve problems facing food and agriculture today. This year, the theme of our symposium is the next green revolution, challenges and strategies towards a sustainable agriculture. This symposium is part of the Cortiva AgriScience Plan Scientist Symposia series, which provides an opportunity for the next generation of scientists to interact with public and private experts through student-driven and organized events at different academic institutions worldwide. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Corteva AgriScience, Division of Plant Sciences, Division of Biological Sciences, IPG, and the Pond Life Science Center for making this event possible. We have a great lineup of talks from speakers all around the world today and tomorrow. We'll begin with the welcome remarks from Dr. Jason Rouster, followed by talks and then resume after lunch with lightning talks and panel discussion. Please note that some of the talks being presented here are unpublished work. This symposium is a confidential environment for scientific collaboration and to facilitate open discussion. Please do not take photos, videos, or screenshots of any section of the symposium. Now, some of the speakers have kindly agreed to being recorded and those talks will be made available through the symposium website. Now, to officially begin the program, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jason Rouser to deliver his welcoming remarks. He has been an advocate of science and education, leveraging his experience in academia, research, secondary education, and industry to foster mutually beneficial interactions between academia and the private sector in the agricultural and biological sciences. He is currently the academic relations manager for Cortiva Series with more than 30 universities and institutions around the world each year. Let's welcome Dr. Jason Rosser to deliver the welcome remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? I just want to check, get a sound check here. Yep. Yep, we're good. Okay, so let's see if we can be successful in the screen sharing here. Uh, here we go, and I will project it. How do we look? Great, yeah. Can Excellent. See all right, we're off to a good start this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be here with you uh, for the start of the Missouri Symposium. Uh, my name is Jason Rauscher. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm Academic Relations Manager within R&D at Corteva AgriScience. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning to uh, start off this, this great symposium. And I'd like to start just by uh, uh, giving you a, a little bit of, a, of an introduction to the symposia series. I, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with it, but um, for those of you who are not, uh, this is a Corteva sponsored global program of scientific symposia, which is initiated and organized by graduate students. Uh, it is uh, what we uh, consider to be an innovative high impact model for industry support of graduate education. Um, this is a program that's been around since 2008. Uh, the University of Missouri is a very important part of this uh, international program with which we've had uh, over 180 events uh, at over 60 institutions uh, since that, in that time. And uh, we're very proud of this, this uh, incredible international network that has been developed through this program. Uh, and I hope to show uh, some of the, the, the benefits of, uh, of not only the individual events themselves, but this, this entire network. Now, uh, the objectives, uh, as far as we're concerned, are really multifold. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of learning. We have some incredible speakers lined up uh, for this symposium today. So uh, getting exposure to this, uh, the cutting edge science and technical knowledge that they're going to need for the future. Uh, networking is a very important part of this. Obviously, in-person events, uh, that's a, a little bit more 
uh, the, it can be a more, a more powerful uh, networking experience, but we're hoping that even in these virtual events uh, that there is uh, some of this networking that can go on as well. So we think that's very important for graduate students to really build their networks for future career purposes, finding postdocs, jobs in the future, that kind of thing. So, um, and uh, with respect to career development, uh, it, one of the really critical components of this program, as far as we're concerned, is, is to have this interaction between the public and private sectors. And so having speakers from both the public and private sectors uh, is uh, very important, uh, which is why we always uh, contribute a, a Corteva scientist to participate in these events. And then finally, the soft skills um, or interpersonal skills, however you want to call them. Um, it's really an opportunity for these students to show off their leadership skills, to really uh, practice teamwork uh, and build some organizational management skills uh, through this program. And so uh, ultimately we think this is really uh, a great way to empower and support future plant scientists. Now, uh, as everyone is well aware, uh, for the past year, uh, we have been in virtual mode like all other scientific conferences around the world. Um, and, uh, and so today, uh, and in fact, Missouri was one of the first ones to go virtual last year. Uh, and so uh, we're very proud of this, this transition. And we think this is really, it's, it's kind of shown off these skills that these students have acquired, the ability to really uh, transition and, and create these virtual events. Um, and I think uh, in my discussions with, with students throughout the year as they've planned these virtual events, uh, I've really encouraged them to take advantage of, you know, obviously we're losing some things by not meeting in person, but there are advantages to these virtual events. And I've really encouraged them to take, uh, you know, to be creative and take advantage of those, uh, those per, the potential upside of a virtual event. And I think to, uh, today and tomorrow, you're really going to see that, uh, that these Missouri students have really stepped up and uh, taken that to heart. Um, we have a great group of organizing students who have put this together. I know uh, Fernanda has moved on. Uh, not, I don't know if she's here uh, today with us, but uh, she was part of the organization through the year, but uh, she got a job. So um, the other students have really stepped up and, and made this happen today. Um, and I really want to point out that uh, one of the things that I've really encouraged them is to uh, make this an international event. Reach out to uh, speakers across the world that maybe you wouldn't be able to fly into Missouri uh, in, a, in an in-person event. Um, and, uh, and in fact, I'm going to take advantage of this, this cool new map that was developed here, the D DISC global map view here. Uh, and uh, if we look at their, their, the speakers for these next two days, we can see that they've really taken this to heart. Uh, we have speakers from Israel, uh, from Europe, from both coasts of the US, uh, as well as the Midwest. Uh, th so this is truly an international event. Uh, they've done an amazing job of taking advantage of this, this virtual situation. Um, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, the, the public and private mix, uh, we have not only uh, representatives of academia, uh, but we also have uh, not only the Corteva representative, Sarah, who's gonna be giving a great talk, um, but we also have a representative of Indigo Ag, uh, so another private company. So um, I think this is really an exemplary uh, 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 way of, of going about the, these symposia. So we're, we're very proud of what the, the Missouri students have put together. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to the next couple of days. Um, there are other opportunities for leadership uh, within this program. As I mentioned, it's not just individual events. This is an international network. And uh, we do have a student advisory council, uh, leaders from seven different universities right now uh, that uh, their former uh, symposium organizers who uh, provide guidance to us uh, and, and they've, uh, they've had some, some great outcomes, which I'll show in a moment. Um, but this is uh, a program that we've initiated recently and we're really hoping that uh, these students can provide some really great uh, input to this program. Uh, so one of the things that they did last year was, uh, again, this was April of last year, uh, we, when we had still had no idea how long this was going to last, uh, they put together a virtual symposium. So this was not associated with any single university or institution, but this, uh, this student advisory council uh, put together a plant breeding symposium that attracted over a thousand participants uh, from dozens of countries around the world. Um, and so if you want to read more about that, they actually published an article in CSA News in July of last year. Um, we have another organization in Brazil called Intergen, 
uh, which uh, brings together students from seven different universities across Brazil uh, who participate in our program and uh, work together to foster communication between these institutions. So again, another example of how it's not just individual uh, events like today, but really a network uh, coming together uh, and, and, and creating some, some interesting things. And they also held a virtual symposium last year uh, targeted towards Brazil with over 900 participants from an amazing 55 universities and 80 other public and private institutions across Brazil. So uh, they really had an, an amazing impact impact uh, last year uh, in July when they put this on. So we're hoping to continue with these kinds of events uh, in addition to our, our university uh, in partners as well. Um, uh, in addition today to, to today, we obviously have some more events coming up uh, this spring. Uh, we have uh, University of Hawaii. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be traveling to Hawaii for this event, uh, another virtual one, but uh, that's coming up next to then Ohio State and several others. Uh, please visit our website. Uh, we have more information at symposiaseries.corteva.com uh, with uh, updated information on upcoming events. And you're also welcome to join our Plante uh, page uh, if you want to receive updates uh, on Symposia Series events as well. Uh, please connect to me on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, if you post something there related to the symposia, uh, use our hashtag uh, plant size symposia. Uh, and we love to share and see uh, what everybody has been up to. So um, again, I wanna thank you on behalf of Corteva AgriScience and I'm really looking forward to a great couple of days of a symposium. I uh, wish I could be in Columbia with everybody, uh, but uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be uh, with you virtually. So I'll pass it back to you. All right, thank you, Jason, for the nice opening remarks.